Most lifters' lower back and glute training primarily consists of squat and hinge patterns. Deadlifts, RDLs, good mornings, and back and front squats all emphasize hip and back extension. However, these free weight, technically demanding compound movements use heavy loads relative to other exercises and train most of the muscles in the body at once. This means they have a large recovery demand, and therefore it's challenging and not recommended for a lifter to get all of their lower back and glute work solely from these lifts. For this reason, exercises that isolate these muscles a bit more, like back extensions, are useful tools. Back extensions are most commonly performed with body weight or with body weight plus an external load held in the hands at a 45 degree angle using a back extension bench, also called a Roman chair. You can mimic a 45 degree back extension by putting a pad on a barbell in a rack at hip height or using the Smith machine and extending over it with your feet anchored. Some gyms have a 90 degree version of the back extension where your body is parallel to the floor at extension, lengthening the lever arm, making the movement more challenging. A glute ham raise machine, also known as a glute ham developer, also allows you to perform a 90 degree back extension in a similar fashion. Finally, some commercial gyms have seated selector weight back extension machines where you press back into a pad which provides resistance. Any of these options are good choices as accessory movements to build the hip and lumbar extensors. When doing back extensions on a 45 or 90 degree machine, make sure to adjust it so that the pad rests against the top of the pelvis in a comfortable position, allowing a natural hinging point for your torso. Control the descent, lowering yourself as far down as you can comfortably, before forcefully contracting your glutes and lower back to return to a fully erect starting position. Unlike squats or good mornings where you have to keep your spine somewhat straight and minimize its movement to keep your balance and ensure a stable bar position to have an efficient straight bar path, back extensions allow for more spinal movement. There's nothing wrong with going from a bit of flexion at the bottom to a more extended position at the top of each repetition, although you don't need to hyperextend at the top. If you want to focus more on your glutes, however, you can purposely round your back and only come up as high as you can on each rep without straightening your back. Doing so may result in feeling more emphasis in your glutes rather than your lumbar. As you get stronger, you'll have to use different external loads to prevent doing very high rep sets. Especially with the 45 degree angle machine, strong lifters may need to hold on to a plate, dumbbell, or a kettlebell. Eventually, however, you may even get so strong that the best option is to load a barbell on the floor with smaller circumference 10 or 25 pound plates to provide enough load while also allowing enough range of motion. As a final note, back extensions are also great if pain prevents you from squatting or hinging. Often, although not in all cases, back pain might prevent you from doing squats or deadlifts, but you may still be able to perform back extensions. A number of times, we've watched our athletes successfully maintain or even gain muscle using only isolation exercises like back extensions, hip thrusts, leg curls, and leg extensions, despite temporarily being unable to squat and deadlift due to pain or injury. <laughs>